states of matter and the kinetic molecular theory. So the behavior of particles can essentially be summed up with what's called the kinetic molecular theory. And essentially what it states is that matter is made up of particles and these particles act in a particular way. So the first thing is that um, they themselves are quite small and the space between them is relatively large compared to the size of the particles. Depending on what substance you have, you're going to have a different particle. So you have oxygen particles or water particles or nitrogen particles, whatever they happen to be. Um, these particles themselves are always going to have motion. Even at very low temperatures, they're always going to have motion, unless you're at absolute zero, which uh, you wouldn't be able to get to. But uh, other than that, anything um, that we can actually have in terms of a temperature, those particles will have motion, essentially meaning that temperature is motion. Um, we know that if you, they are moving faster, that is what is temperature. So essentially, if you give them heat, they will move faster. Their kinetic energy, the movement of those particles increases, and that is what is temperature. And all of these particles are attracted to each other. Now we know, depending on the type of particle, they're going to have different levels of attraction. So something that is, say, polar will be more attractive, something that has more London forces will be more attractive, but they are all attracted to each other. So this leads us to having the states of matter, which is essentially the outcome of all of that interplay of the kinetic molecular theory. So we have solids, we have liquids, and we have gases, and these ways of being for groups of particles um, are going to have different characteristics to them. So we can think of a solid as having all the particles quite close together. And again, they are in motion. So solid particles are still moving. Liquid particles are moving more and their, their type of motion is going to be um, additional to whatever a solid particle has. And gas particles have even more motion than liquid particles. So the overall properties that we see of these are that the solid particles themselves, they're not moving around. They have a fixed shape and they are also going to have a fixed volume because of this. So the spaces between the particles is not changing. The particles themselves are vibrating back and forth, but not moving around. And so they have a fixed shape and fixed volume and they're essentially incompressible. You get a little bit of compression, but not much. Um, with a liquid state, the particles themselves are actually going to be able to change their shape. So essentially they flow. Um, they're not in a rigid structure. They can move from one place to the other, um, but their volume is fixed. So the spaces between them is not changing greatly. They are a little bit compressible, but essentially you can assume they're, they're not compressing by very much. Um, so the, the spaces between them is not changing, but they can move around relative to each other, which the solid particles cannot do. Now, gases, on the other hand, um, they can actually change the, the shape of a, a gas sample, put it in any shape container. It'll actually take the shape of the container. Essentially, the particles will move anywhere they want to, and therefore, any sample of gas can take on any shape. Um, and because of this, their volume itself is able to vary. They can actually change the amount of space between the particles, and therefore, they are compressible, also expandable. So we refer to the type of motion that these particles have in their different states is that a solid particle, they have vibrational motion. As the kinetic molecular theory is saying, all particles are going to be moving at all times. And so even solid particles, even a block of ice, the particles that are in there, they are still moving with only vibrational motion. If the state of the substance is a liquid, they also have vibrational motion, um, but on top of that, they have rotational motion. So you can think these particles are able to move around relative to each other, and this is why the liquids are able to flow. Gases have vibrational, they have rotational, and they also have what's called translational. Again, that's describing the idea that they are able to change their shape and volume because they can change the spaces between them. They are able to move from one spot to another spot. And if they're beside a particle, in one case, they can move to another spot. And so they're, they're changing the volume, or I guess I should say the space between the particles, and therefore the volume of the sample can change due to this translational moving from one place to another motion. The reason why we see the 
um, properties of a solid is because the, the forces that hold those particles together are quite strong. And so they are attracted to each other, as all particles are, and they are very strongly attracted to each other. So they can't move around. So one particle is stuck right next to the other particle because they are very attracted to each other. If that attractive forces is um, less so, let's uh, let's say for a given temperature anyways, um, what that means is if you have one particle next to another particle, they're still attracted to each other, as they always are, but they are not so attracted that they can't move around relative to each other. Now, they can't get up and leave because they're quite attracted to the, the other particles that are around, um, and so they're still going to remain in a fixed volume. They're not going to leave. They're not going to have translational motion because their relative strength of uh, between the particles is is going to be somewhere between a solid and a gas all other things being equal now again relatively speaking the attractive forces of a gas are going to be weaker um, and of course this is at a given temperature so if you had a comparable sample of something that is a one sample is a solid, one sample is a liquid, and one sample is a gas at the same temperature. You can explain why they would have those different states because of the attractiveness of their particles. So for example, if you had something like helium atoms, say like these guys here, they could be helium atoms, they are attracted to each other, but because helium is quite small and there's no polarity to it, the London forces, and there, there's no polar forces, are quite weak, and therefore they're able to move around relative to each other. They're able to have translational motion, rotational motion, um, and everything has vibrational motion, um, at a even a very low temperature. However, if you took something more like a, let's say, a H2O, um, which is quite small, so there's not a whole lot of London forces, but there's quite a bit of polarity there. Um, it is going to be more attracted at a given temperature, and therefore, let's say at 10 degrees Celsius, um, helium will be a gas because the forces between the particles are quite weak, still attractive, but quite weak, whereas water at, say, 10 degrees, um, not quite room temperature, but 10 degrees, is going to be a liquid because the forces of attraction are higher. Even though it's quite a small molecule, it does have some polarity to it. And so those particles are going to have a, a fairly attractive uh, force holding them together. Then if you had something um, that was, I don't know, say quite big, um, or even maybe something that has like ionic forces. So let's say a sodium chloride at room temperature, these ionic charges that are holding the salt together are really strong. And so it is going to be a solid at room temperature. In terms of the disorder, and sort of a, a better way of thinking of it than thinking of it as being organized, is, is it better to sort of think of it as how disorganized it is? Um, a solid has very low disorganization. Each particle sort of has that slow spot, and that's where it's going to be, and so the disorganization is quite low. Liquids, they're not moving all over the place, but they are able to move to quite a few places, and therefore their disorder is sort of relatively medium. Whereas a gas relative to the other two would have a very high amount of disorder because the particles could move anywhere around. There's lots of options for them to be in different spots and therefore they have high disorder. Kinetic energy and temperature. So again, remember kinetic is referring to motion and because this is chemistry, we're talking about the particle motion, not like the whole sample moving around the room or something, but the individual particles moving. So kinetic energy, the motion of those particles. And specifically, we're gonna be referring to the vibrational motion of those particles, which both solids, liquids, and gases are gonna have. So temperature is the average kinetic energy, or the vibrational energy, of a group of particles. So you have a sample and a bunch of particles in there and whether, whatever state they happen to be in, they're all gonna have vibrational motion. And if you were to take an average reading of that vibrational motion, that's what we refer to as temperature. So if they have more vibrational motion, they have a higher temperature. If you increase a substance's temperature, that is an increase in the particle's motion. So, so temperature is the particle's motion. It's not like the two are related. They are the same thing. A particle's motion is its temperature as an average across the sample of the group. So with enough energy, if you take a, a state, let's say a solid, uh, and those particles themselves are going to have a particular amount of vibrational energy, if you give them heat, um, you can cause those particles to vibrate faster, to have their kinetic energy increase, and that's going to 
bring up their temperature because that is the increase in kinetic energy is an increase in temperature. Um, and what it will also do is whatever level of attraction they have towards each other, if you give them enough energy, they may be able to have um, a space or, or less attractive I guess they're still having the same attractive force, uh, but they're going to be able to overcome that attractive force with the amount of motion that those particles have. So essentially, this can cause them to change state. So a solid that previously only had vibrational energy is going to be able to overcome the attractive force. It's still there, but they're able to overcome that attractive force between the particles, and the particles will be able to actually move around relative to each other. And so in that case, we have a solid becoming a liquid, which we refer to as a change in state. So you can imagine if you have a solid, um, those particles have their fixed spots. They still have vibrational energy. And so you could have a cold solid or a warmer solid based on how much vibrational energy they have. If you give them some energy, so you apply heat, you transfer heat to them. Um, and what that can do is it'll give those particles more energy. And it may be enough energy to allow them to start move around relative to each other with even more vibrational energy. Um, and now they actually have rotational energy as well, which is going to make them liquid. That is a change in state. And of course, you can continue to give them more energy. And that energy can then be used to give them a translational energy. And again, they'll still have vibration. They're actually going to have a temperature. It'll be a higher temperature. They have more vibrational energy, as well as rotational energy, as well as translational energy, making them into a gas. So these are the changes of state um, based on their temperature. And of course, um, the relative temperature, if they have a lower temperature as a sample, they're going to have less energy. And again, depending on the type of attractive forces, because different substances will have different amounts of attractive forces, but relatively speaking, um, if you start with any given substance as a solid, you can apply heat to it, give it those particles energy, and cause it to change into a liquid and more would change it to, into a gas. And then of course you can remove energy and have it move in the opposite direction as well.